Ivy, Bean, Make the Rules, by Annie Barrows. Never forever. Girls are strong. Girls are great, sang Nancy, boinging into the kitchen. Girls have the power to see our eight. She stomped her foot and put one arm in the air. At girl power forever, of stop singing that song, said Bean grumpily. She sucked the milk out of her spoon. Then she slurped down the cereal that was left behind. Nancy watched. That's got to be the slowest way to eat cereal in the entire world. I know, said Bean, slurping. That's why I do it. To make it last longer. Well, cut it out, Nancy said. I have to get to camp. Today's the first day. As if Bean didn't know that already. Camp, camp, camp. Nancy had been talking about it for weeks. And there it was, right on her t-shirt, in big letters, Girl Power Forever. For spring break, Nancy was going to Girl Power Forever Camp. Bean was too young for Girl Power Forever Camp. You had to be eleven. If you were seven, like some people, the only camp you could go to was Puppet Fun. Bean would never in a million years go to Puppet Fun. Nancy dropped her backpack on the kitchen table and opened one of its many pockets. Nancy's backpack was a fancy zebra-striped kind. There was a tiny troll doll attached to one of its zippers. Bean's backpack was dirty and orange, and she had tried to draw an eagle on the front, but it hadn't turned out right. It looked like a slug with wings. Nancy pulled out her special folding brush and brushed her already brushed hair. Without even looking, she made a ponytail and fixed it with a sparkly scrunchie. Hurry up, she said to Bean. Just eat it. Bean took a long, slow slurp. I don't see why I have to hurry, she said. I'm not going to your old camp. You can go when you're eleven, Nancy said. Bun Bean scowled. No way. Camp? Ha! Not for me. She shook her head. I've got too much other stuff to do. Nancy smiled. What kind of stuff? Bean shook her head like she had so much to do that she couldn't even begin to tell about it. Nancy patted her shoulder sympathetically. Finish your cereal. You have to go with Mom to drop me off at camp. Stop feeling sorry for me, snapped Bean. But Nancy had already left the room, her ponytail swishing, on her way to have secret, big kid fun that Bean wasn't allowed to have. Bean pushed out her chair and stood up. I'm not a baby, you know, she yelled. Five million girls in pink girl power forever shirts were squirming around outside the youth center, waiting for camp to begin. They hugged each other and squealed. They showed each other their cell phones. They sang. They danced. They giggled. They were all bouncy and happy and busy. Bean stood beside her mother. Unbouncy, unhappy, unbusy. She watched as Nancy rushed to her friend, Dee Dee. Once they had. Hugged and squealed, they gave each other piggyback rides. Then they traded scrunchies and squealed some more. Then someone blew a whistle, and all five million girls swarmed into the youth center. Bye, Mom, called Nancy, swinging her backpack over her shoulder. Bye, Beanie. Beanie? Fooey. Bean turned and began to trudge home beside her mother. At least she didn't have to trudge far. The youth center was a big shed on the edge of Monkey Park, just a block and a half from Bean's house. What's that camp about, anyway? Bean asked. Not that she cared. 
Her mom stopped and rattled around in her purse. I've got a brochure in here somewhere, she said. Oh. Here it is. She pulled out a pink sheet of paper with daisies on it. Being read, girl power forever. A week of inspiration and fun for girls. Ages 11 to 14 crafts nature study mind slash body strength training drama first aid dance social skills plus our role models, great women of history hands-on learning in a safe and supportive atmosphere, snacks provided. Her mom smiled at her. You wish you were going to camp, too, don't you? Bean was getting ding-dang tired of people looking at her sympathetically. No. And she didn't. Not really. I can still get you into puppet fun, her mom said. No. Bean yelled. I've got too much to do. Ivy and I have important plans for this week. Her mother stopped walking and crouched down to look in Bean's eyes. Okay. You're probably too grown up for puppet fun. Anyway. You're getting to be a pretty big kid. Bean nodded. She was. Her mom went on, I think you might be old enough to do something new. You're going to get me a dirt bike? Bean broke in. Her mom laughed. No. I wasn't thinking of a dirt bike. I was thinking that maybe you were big enough to come here to Monkey Park by yourself, if you come with Ivy and if it's okay with Katrine. Katrine was Ivy's mom. Bean sighed inside herself and turned to look at Monkey Park. Its real name was Mrs. Taylor Hopper and such Memorial Park, but everybody called it Monkey Park because it had a fountain with a statue of a smiling monkey in the middle. The monkey was dressed in a shiny blue suit, and he held a big, shiny platter. Of oranges and grapes. The fountain water spurted out of his hat. Besides the fountain, Monkey Park had one big flat field and one not-so-flat field and a playground filled with babies. There were some trees and some bushes and some flowers. Kids played soccer at Monkey Park. Families had picnics there. Babies crawled up the play structure. Nothing exciting had ever happened in Monkey Park. Going to Monkey Park was the opposite of going to Girl Power Forever Camp. But Bean knew her mother was trying to be nice, so she nodded. Okay. They walked home. As they climbed the front stairs, Bean's mom said, You can always help with the dishes if you're looking for something to do. Big kids help. Sorry, said Bean. I'm only seven. UN Magic Tree House. Bean did have important plans. Okay, one important plan. It was about a board. She had found a good board, a really good one. It was wide and strong and smooth. It had probably been a bookshelf once, but when Bean saw it, she knew that it was meant to be a tree house. It would be the floor of Bean's tree house, her secret hideaway, her fort, her almost apartment up in the leaves, where no one could come unless Bean gave her permission. Except Ivy, because Ivy was going to help her build it. They were going to be tree housemates. There was one problem with Bean's plan. Trees. Bean's backyard had trees, but not trees with nice, low, friendly branches. It had trees with high, unfriendly branches. Bean had tried putting her board in a bush, but that didn't work. The bush had sort of fallen over. Bean had gritted her teeth and lugged the board to her front yard, where there was a plum tree with some sturdy branches. A front yard tree house was not as good as a backyard tree house, but Bean was trying to be open-minded. Another problem was nails. Bean was not supposed to use them. Or hammers. Her dad had promised to nail the board into the plum tree, but he kept forgetting. 
Now, as Bean thought about Nancy and Girl Power Forever Camp, she decided she couldn't wait for her dad. She had to make her tree house today. No hammer and nails? Fine. She would find another way, a better way. Nancy would come home from camp and wish she had a tree house like Bean's. Bean might let her sit inside it for one minute. Bean looked over at Ivy's house, on the other side of Pancake Court. The curtains were closed. But that was okay. Bean could do it on her own. Girls are strong, girls are. Great, she sang softly. Girls have the power to see our E8. Feeling determined, Bean set to work. The first question was how to stick things together without nails. Easy peasy. Duct tape. Bean raced inside and came out with a thick roll of tape. She was getting more determined by the moment. Probably kids would cluster around the bottom of the plum tree, hoping to be allowed in her tree house. She shoved the board up into the tree's branches, looked at it for a second, and then went inside to get a chair. She banged her knee dragging the chair over the lawn, and it wasn't very good for the lawn, but at last she was ready. She stood on the seat, wrapping tape around the board and the branch. Tape, tape, tape. Okay. Done. She got down and moved the chair to the other end of the board. Tape, tape, tape high. Yikes! Bean grabbed the tree to keep from falling off her chair. Did I scare you? Ivy looked pleased. I'm trying to walk without making any sound. Why do you want to do that? asked Bean. So I can creep up on people and cast spells on them, Ivy said. Ivy was going to be a witch when she grew up, so she needed to know things like that. Oh. Can you hold on to this side while I tape the other end? Ivy stood on the chair beside Bean. Bean taped up a storm. There, she exclaimed. Done. They both got off the chair and stood back to look. The board looked surprisingly small, there among the branches of the plum tree. In fact, it looked puny. It didn't look like a tree house. It looked like a board. With lots of tape on it. Bean's throat got thick and hot. Big kids made tree houses all the time. They didn't have to use tape. They used nails and a hammer. They stood on ladders, not chairs. They pounded nails while telling jokes, and their tree houses were as big as regular houses and secret, not out in front of everyone in their front yards. Big kids built things, made things, cooked things, had things, knew things. And Bean didn't. Because she was just a little kid. Ivy watched Bean's face. We could fix it, she said. She meant the tree house. No, said Bean. I'm sick of this tree house. She kicked the plum tree. What good is idea tree house anyway? You sit in it. It's dumb. Well, said Ivy, you could eat cookies in it. Eating. Eating is boring, said Bean crabbly. I want to do things. Fun things. Like crafts and nature study. Crafts and nature study? Ivy asked. What? From her pocket, Bean pulled out the Girl Power Forever paper and handed it to Ivy. That's what I want to do, she said. I want to do all that. Ivy read the list. Crafts. Nature study. First aid. She looked up at Bean and then back at the paper. Dance, drama, social skills had great women of history. She began to smile. Bean. 
We can do all this stuff. We don't need to go to camp. We can make our own camp. Camp Flaming Arrow hits the spot. There are certain things a camp has to have. The first thing is counselors. The people who run camps are called counselors. They make all the decisions and they are prepared for anything. Plus, everyone has to do what they say. Counselor Ivy, said Bean. She saluted. Counselor Bean, said Ivy. She saluted, too. Bean put the ring of duct tape on her arm. If you had duct tape, you were prepared for anything. Okay, now let's make some decisions. The first thing we have to decide is the name. Okay, said Ivy. What do you want to call it? Something good, said Bean. Right. Something cool, Bean said. Right. Cool, agreed Ivy. And something kind of tough sounding, Bean went on. Something that will make people wish they went to our camp. Like Camp Flaming Arrow. Flaming arrows were totally cool and tough. Bean had seen them in a movie. They shot through the air and whatever they hit burned to a crisp. Or Camp Neanderthal said Ivy dreamily. Neanderthals are cool and tough. Bean had never heard of Neanderthals, so Ivy explained that they were long-gone cave people who were maybe short and stumpy, but definitely brave. They clubbed saber-toothed tigers over the head, they were ns so brave. Bean had to agree, Neanderthals were pretty cool. They were just as cool as flaming arrows. How could they choose between them? Eeny meeny, Ivy suggested. So they eeny meenied, and when Flaming Arrows won, Ivy didn't even mind very much, because Camp Flaming Arrow was such a great name. Who wouldn't want to be in Camp Flaming Arrow? Another reason Ivy didn't mind very much about eeny meeny was that she had her own great idea right afterward. It was about the tent. They needed a tent. No tent, no camp. But unfortunately, neither Ivy nor Bean had a tent handy. Where could they get one? For a few minutes, they were stumped. Then Ivy got her great idea. Hey, she said and jumped to her feet. My mom got new curtains. She began to run toward her house. Bean didn't think that was very exciting. But, as she found out when Ivy came back, the new curtains were not the exciting part. The exciting part was the old curtains. Ivy had fished them out of the garbage, for long white pieces of cloth, perfect for tent making. She and Bean laid the cloth out on the grass and duct taped the tops of the curtains together to make one super wide piece of white cloth. Ta da! Now they had a tent. Anno, all we have to do is throw it over that branch and Camp Flaming Arrow can begin, said Ivy, pointing to the plum tree. No, said Bean. Camp Flaming Arrow isn't here. Ivy looked confused. Then where is it? Monkey Park, said Bean firmly. Real camps are at Monkey Park. Bean's mom said okay. In her backpack, Bean placed a safety pin, a Santa hat with a beard attached to it, and a wolf mask left over from Halloween. She carried a big sign that said Camp Flaming Arrow in her hands, so it wouldn't get crumpled. Presto! She was ready for camp. Ivy's mom said okay. Ivy got the tent into her backpack, but there wasn't much room for anything else. She slipped in a few band-aids. Better safe than sorry, just like teachers always said. At the last minute, she jammed in her magnifying glass as well. She was ready for camp. Bye, 
They screeched to their mothers. At the edge of the park, they stopped. Whoa, Nellie, Bean said. Monkey Park was bursting with kids. On the big flat field, there were two soccer games going on, with another pack of kids jumping up and down on the side. On the not-so-flat field, kids clustered around a picnic table, doing something with paper bags. A bunch more kids were having a tug-of-war with some teenagers. More kids. Sat in the grass, listening to a man talk about Indians. Over in the playground, babies were falling down and sliding and screaming. Nobody paid any attention as Bean and Ivy walked over to the side of the park where the trees were. They flung the two curtain wide cloth over a tree branch and carefully spread out the edges that touched the ground. They went inside. They came back outside and put rocks on the edges to make them stay. Bean unrolled the camp flaming arrow sign and stuck it to the tent with her safety pin. Ivy and Bean looked at each other and smiled. Camp Flaming Arrow was open for business. Very crafty. Bean and Ivy went inside their tent. They came out. They sat on the grass. They got up. They walked around. They sat back down again. Finally, Ivy said, What exactly do you do at camp? Bean pulled out the Girl Power Forever paper and looked at the list. All this stuff is what you do. Ivy nodded. But what comes first? I'm not sure, said Bean. That's why I brought these. She held up the wolf mask and the Santa hat. Wolf and Santa camp? asked Ivy. That sounds fun. No. We're going to go to the youth center and spy on Girl Power Forever Camp, said Bean. She put the wolf mask over her face and handed the Santa hat and beard to Ivy. Whatever they're doing, we'll do it too. Ivy put on the Santa hat. Hunks of beard fell off in her mouth. Don't you think they might notice a wolf and a Santa spying on them? Nah, said Bean. We're going to be really quiet. They won't notice a thing. Then why are we wearing this stuff? asked Ivy, pulling Santa hair out of her mouth, just to be on the safe side, said Bean. Because if Nancy does notice us, she's going to lose her marbles. Wolf eyes are not in the same place as people eyes, Bean realized. After she smacked into a tree for the second time, Bean decided to take the mask off until she got to the oil youth center. Santa didn't have a problem seeing. Santa had a problem breathing. With every breath, big puffs of beard flew into Ivy's throat and made her cough. SHH, warned Bean. I can't help it, choked Ivy. Spit, said Bean. So Ivy did. That helped some. They slithered among the monkey park trees. Even without her mask, Bean was a wolf, hunting her prey, tiptoe, tiptoe. Ivy was Santa, trying to deliver presents without waking up all the kids, tiptoe, tiptoe. They were almost there. Bean and Ivy whisked across a patch of grass and huddled against the cement walls of the youth center, tiptoe, tiptoe. They curled around the building's corner, tiptoe, tiptoe. They crouched down and scuttled underneath the window, and Bean snapped her mask on. Slowly, slowly, they stood up and peeked in the window. At long tables, rows of girls were bent over tiny threads, nodding and nodding. Ivy nudged Bean and whispered, Crafts? Friendship bracelets, Bean whispered back. She looked up and down the rows for Nancy. There she was. She was crouched over a table piled with colored threads. She was nodding like crazy. She was nodding so hard that her tongue was sticking out of her mouth. 
You want to do that? whispered Ivy. Bean looked at the nodders again. It was real camp. In real camp, they made friendship bracelets. Yeah, Bean whispered. Ivy nodded. Okay, if you want to. Unfortunately, nodding let loose a big fluff of beard. And very unfortunately, Ivy breathed it in and began coughing. And extra unfortunately, three girl power forever campers glanced up and saw a wolf and a choking Santa peeking in the window. And then, really quite unfortunately, they screamed, OMG. OMG! What was that? And Nancy looked up. But fortunately, Ivy and Bean were long gone by that time. By that time, they were racing wildly through the trees, zip zip zip, tearing off the wolf mask and the Santa hat and beard. They reached Camp Flaming Arrow and flung themselves into their tent. Then they lay there, gasping. Time for crafts. Bean wheezed. Since Ivy was still choking on Santa Fuzz, Bean ran to her house to get string. She came back to Camp Flaming Arrow a few minutes later holding twelve neat coils of colored string. Where'd you get those? asked Ivy. Bean said, one of the best things about Nancy being in camp is that she isn't in her room. Won't she mind? Nah, said Bean. She has tons of it. She won't even notice. Didn't you just say that about the mask and the Santa? asked Ivy. She looked at the strings. How do you make a friendship bracelet, anyway? Bean felt like a real counselor. The first thing you do is pick your colors, she said. They picked their colors. The twelve neat coils of string turned into a brightly colored mound of string. Next, you put all six of your strings together and tie a knot, said Bean. She was pretty sure that was what you did, anyway. She looked at Ivy's knot. Very good, she said. Now, you make more knots, one in each string. The more knots, the better, she figured. More knots, asked Ivy. Making knots took a lot of concentration. That's what friendship bracelets are all about. Knots, said Bean briskly. She started knotting her own strings. Knot, knot, knot. Knot. Wait. She had tied one string to another. Bomber. My strings all bunched up, said Ivy. D undo it, said Bean, trying to untie her bad knot. I can't, said Ivy. Bean sliced one of her strings in half with her fingernail. Now she had seven strings. Yow. String o -rama. Of Jolene. Now my first knot's undone, Ivy announced. Mine turned into two strings, Bean said. You know, said Ivy. I already know we're friends. It's not like I need a bracelet to figure it out. Now three of Bean's strings were split. She had thirteen strings. Stupid strings, she muttered. She tried to untangle them. When she looked up, she saw that Ivy had wrapped all of her strings around her own wrists. She was using her teeth to tie the ends in a knot. What are you doing? Bean asked. That's not a craft. I'm being Houdini, said Ivy. No rope could hold him. He could escape from anything. She held out her wrists. Tie this knot and I'll show you how he did it. Bean threw her strings on the ground. There's no way you'd escape if I tied my special knot. That's what you think, said Ivy. I'm getting really good at escaping. Bean leaned over and tied the string around Ivy's wrists, nodding once, twice, three times. Hey, 
she said. Look! It's a friendship bracelet. Happy campers. Ivy had just finished tying Bean's arm and leg together behind her back when they heard a voice say, That's weird. What? said Ivy, looking around. She got up to investigate. Hey! called Bean. You can't just walk away. What are you doing? asked Ivy. I'm trying to get the heck out of this rope, yelled Bean. But Ivy was talking to someone else. To someone else's. They were peeking out of a bush. We're running away from home, said one of them. He was a little kid, littler than Ivy and Bean. No, we're not. He says anything, the other one said. She was about their age. Are you doing a trick? Welcome to Camp Flaming Arrow, said Bean in her best counselor voice. It was hard to look like a counselor with her foot tied to her hand, but she tried. Camp what? asked the girl. Camp Flaming Arrow, said Ivy. You know, whoosh through the air, sizzle. She added, some people call it Camp Neanderthal. The girl looked at Bean. Why is she all tied up? Crafts, yelled Bean, struggling to get her foot free. The boy set down his backpack. That's a good craft. Can I be in your camp? I thought you were running away from home, said Ivy. No. The girl shook her head. We're visiting our great aunt. She told us to come here and play. We can't go back to her house until dinner. Wow, said Ivy. Dinner's a long time from now. The girl nodded. She's kind of crabby. Bean heaved herself over onto her side with a thump. She smiled, showing all her teeth. Welcome to Camp Flaming Arrow, a week of fun and inspiration for G-Kids. The boy was a boy, so it couldn't be just for girls. I'm Counselor Bean, and that girl is Counselor Ivy. The boy's name was Harlan, and he was six years old. His sister was Franny, and she was seven. Harlan asked where the other campers were. Maud Bean tried to think of a good answer. She couldn't. Actually, there aren't any other dash camp doesn't really start until next week, Ivy broke in. Right, said Bean. This is practice week. Just for counselors. But we'll make an exception for you, said Ivy. Boop Bean nodded seriously. You're lucky. If you came next week, you might not get in. This camp is pretty popular. Ivy nodded seriously, too. You don't look very old to be counselors, said Franny. Oh, we're old all right, said Bean. We're short for our ages, said Ivy. Really short. She sighed sadly. Harlan and Franny could tell that it wouldn't be polite to ask any more questions about that. Now. We always start with a little talk about camp rules, said Bean, rubbing her hands together. So sit down. Crisscross applesauce. Hop to it. Harlan and Franny plopped down on the grass and waited obediently. Ivy and Bean looked at each other with shining eyes. This was going to be good. No one ever let them make the rules. Rule number one, said Bean. You can only have as much fun as you are willing to get hurt. What? said Franny. Rule two, said Ivy. Live and learn. Her mom said that a lot. Rule three, yelled Bean. The counselor is always right. Ivy began to giggle. Rule four. If you want to make an omelet, you're going to have to break some eggs. 
If you can't beat M, join M, bellowed Bean. Don't get mad, get even, yelled Ivy. I don't think this is a real camp, said Franny. Time for crafts, shouted Bean. How was your day, Bean? her dad asked that night at dinner. Great, said Bean. What did you do? Great, said Bean. She was thinking about crafts. It had been a lot of fun. Even Franny and Harlan had had fun. They were the kind of kids who enjoyed having their hands tied to their feet. What? said her dad. Bean turned to Nancy. How was girl power forever? she asked. Super duper fun. Nancy said, shoving a forkful of pasta into her mouth. What exactly?